Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Jay Calvert, and today I am here with my most non-excessive skinned, eyelided co-host <laughs> to talk about blepharoplasty, <laughs> Dr. Millicent Ravello. Good evening. How are you? I'm good, and I noticed that you do not need blepharoplasty anymore. I, anymore, because I had one. <laughs> so therefore, I will speak to this as a patient and a doctor. Yes, I and I will talk to you as a patient also because I need blepharoplasty. <laughs> Something awful. As a prospective patient. <laughs> it's not even prospective. Like it's an emergency. We should go to the <laughs> OR immediately following this podcast and, and take care of it, please. So blepharoplasty is a procedure for the skin of the eyelids. This is part of our 101 series where we're just really trying to hit the basics in a very basic, short and sweet manner. We struggle with that sometimes because we take detours, but we're going to really try and just hit the sweet spots here on blepharoplasties. And blepharoplasties is basically surgery of the eyelid. And this can be the upper eyelid or it can be the lower eyelid. So let's just jump right into it and talk about the upper eyelid. The upper eyelid's pretty straightforward. The technical term for needing a blepharoplasty is really dermatochalasis. It's mm -hmm. the diagnos diagnoses we made that say, oh boy, there's excess skin needs to come off. There can be hooding, there can be brow ptosis that's all involved in upper lid right. blepharoplasty. That has to be considered. Especially, I, I typically don't like to consider just doing eyelid surgery without the brow. Right. Because usually it goes hand in hand. If you are at a stage or an age where you have developed excess skin of your upper eyelids, you've probably also developed some degree of eyebrow ptosis, which just means that the eyebrows now sit a little bit lower on the forehead. And so together, the low position of the eyebrows with the excess skin of the upper eyelid just sort of closes off the upper eye and makes the eye appear smaller. And a lot of times these patients, you, you can diagnose them depending on their level of Botox because they are constantly activating their forehead muscles to raise their eyebrows up or to get that extra skin off their eyes so they can actually see. So they're constantly contracting their forehead muscles to raise their eyebrows just to open up their eyes. And if you only address the eyelid skin, and say you take the eyelid skin that's extra, but you don't do anything with the upper brow, the brow can drop even lower. Because yes. now the forehead doesn't have to work as hard to open up the eyes so that you can see. And so the brows now drop even lower on your forehead. And now you just look like you're mad all the time. <laughs> yeah, because it does... I mean, that's the bottom line is that the when you take skin out of the upper eyelid, it's going to recruit that skin from somewhere. So typically it brings the brow down. Right. And I have seen this in people who just get their eyes done, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Doing the brow is really important. So a brow lift with the upper blepharoplasty, plus or minus some fat excision from the fat pockets of the upper eyelid. There's... Uh, I, I typically take some fat out of the medial and middle fat pads. Right, I don't too. typically go underneath the orbicularis oculi muscle and take out what's called the SUF, mm -hmm. you know, the or, orbicularis oculi fat pad that's underneath the uh, the muscle. There's no need to. I just, there's there's I, no um, need to. That, that'll give you that very kind of hollowed out skeletal look, which had a moment, I think, maybe back in the 80s and 90s. But we've learned that by doing that, you tend to actually age the yeah. eyelid area and that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to make it rejuvenated so minimal fat removal most people have a little bit of excess right in the corner of their upper eyelid that's safe to take but getting too aggressive with the fat removal is just not necessary it's not cute and it's not you, you it, need, is, it, it doesn't look not good cute. you don't need it but one of the things that's really important when you're going in for your upper lid blepharoplasty evaluation is there's a few things you do have to rule out to make sure are not also contributing to your eyelid problems and one of them is just ptosis of the actual eyelid itself it's a very big word ptosis ptosis p-t-o-s-i-s ptosis <laughs> which means drooping of the lid Sagging. that is due to other factors than just having some excess skin. skin there's actually a uh, weakness or an excess of the muscle that right. raises the eyelid or a uh, a weakness of kind of the complex interaction of those right. muscles and tendons of the upper eyelid. 
that's that can cause the lid to be low and you note that because the actual eyelid margin the lash margin encroaches on the the pupil, the pupil itself yeah. and you see that the lid is actually shading down right like over the pupil right and so that's a different problem that's a ptosis correction you have to resuspend the muscles do something with the actual muscles that provide function to the eyelid it's not just as straightforward as taking the skin off so that's just something to know ahead of time you have to diagnose that so that you do the right surgery for the right patient but in someone that doesn't have any associated ptosis and it's just a straightforward excision of skin plus or minus a brow lift that's fairly straightforward if you're just doing the upper eyelids say for some reason i don't know you don't need the brows if you're just doing the upper eyelids i mean that's you can do that awake you don't have to go to sleep for that it's literally I'm not saying you should, but no. you could. <laughs> I would not. Not, not to me. <laughs> I will, I will Needles take a Needles around the eyeballs, not, uh, not something not I want to do awake. Yeah. But it is a very simple, straightforward procedure with minimal downtime, very fast healing. It's pretty smooth procedure. If you're adding the upper brow to that, then you are going to have to go to sleep and have a, a legit brow lift, which is another topic of discussion. But suffice to say, the upper eyebrows typically go together with the upper eyelids. Definitely. Most definitely. On to the lower lids. The lower lids. So this is where it gets a little more complex. This is where it gets a little (laughs) crazy. (laughs) Because just like the upper eyelids are, are rarely done without a brow lift, the lower lids are rarely done without something along with the cheek or a suspension or something. So the lower lids they can have a whole range of problems. Some people have extra skin or crepey skin that they don't like. Some people have these fat bulging pockets that they don't like. Right here, dude. Here you go. Right here. That's what I need. I call those festoons. Those aren't festoons. No, I know, but I think I'm getting them. <laughs> <laughs> they're on my way. <laughs> festoons are when they're on your cheeks. I know. It's when yeah. they, well, they're, they're close. Are they, are they encroaching they're getting on your cheeks? There. <laughs> I know. I'm just. Uh, it's. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but we're going to intervene. We're going to intervene. We have. We're going to. We're going to take care of this. We're going to. St- it must be stopped before they kill somebody. We can't have that. No. But what what's really happening? As what Dr. Calvert is calling festoons, but I really just it's fat. So there, normally the eyeball has fat that sits on the inside of the eyeball. It's contained within the eyeball complex, but over time or just. In congenitally in genetics the lining of the eyeball weakens and so the fat that usually sits on the inside can sort of herniate or protrude through and that's what people can see as bags under the eyes but really it's just this fat that's coming through this weakened orbital septum do you think that it's just the orbital septum is getting weak or is it that you've actually shrunk that your skull, skull and your skeleton the bones. and the bones are getting smaller and so you that's just probably have, true too because that, i mean that we know that it's a thing we know that happens yeah for sure um but that's i think it's just a lot of things and you you know you're just you're just getting old it's time to time yeah. to buff it up you, you gotta time, tighten things you gotta tighten things you gotta redo that's it that's the deal that's why we have plastic surgeons i know for god's sake i mean come on and you there are is a small subset of people in their 20s that have isolated fat bulging. And that's a genetic inheritable thing. That's how they're built. And in that person, all they need is to have that fat removed and boom, lower blepharoplasty done. But the average aging patient usually needs a little bit more than just that fat removal. some Off. need skin. Some need skin. Some need skin. The skin but pinch. Even then, it's, it's a pinch. I mean, it's literally a pinch because the last thing you want to do is take too much skin away from the lower eyelid. Yeah, because then you get a show, what's called scleral show. The sclera is the white part of the eye. So you have the, you know, the pupil, the iris is the black part that, you know, is the aperture of your, you know, camera eye, basically. And then the white part is called the sclera. Mm-hmm. And that part, uh, if you see too much of it below... The, the limbus, the edge of the right. uh, it should pupil. Be, it should be iris and then lower lid. There, That's should, be right. no there should not be no white. white below your iris right. on the lower or upper part. And of so the people who've gotten overly aggressive lower lid blepharoplasty with too much skin excision have what's called scleral show. And so you'll see that they, they almost have sad eyes. You know, they it do. just makes them look. They look sad. They look very sad. Yeah, like a little puppy. 
and well, they done. might they might be really happy. They might I know, right? And but, but they, they look just sad. look sad. <laughs> they look sad. It's very sad. So you got to be really really conservative with the amount of skin you take there. And frequently you don't even need to take skin. You can do some kind of tightening procedure of the skin. Yes. A chemical peel, a TCA peel, some kind of laser therapy after the surgery 100%. just to tighten that skin up and that skin is so thin. It doesn't need much. It responds really well to these kind of tightening procedures. And frequently that can be enough to combined with the fat removal to really rejuvenate that lower eyelid. Well, and, and if you go too far, then you pay for it. Your patient pays for it. Oh, yeah, they no, get, for sure. They get ectropion, which is when the eyelid actually rolls out away from the, the globe, away from the eyeball. Um, you can cause a lot of problems with lower lid blepharoplasty. For sure. And the other thing that we always check before we do surgery on the lower eyelid, after a certain age or with the aging eyelid, that actual lower lid margin, the part that contains the lashes, that can become loose and weak as well. And then if you go in there and you do a surgery and you futz with it, it can sometimes fall away as well, even if you don't take any skin. And so we frequently do have to resuspend or tighten the lower lid, and that's called a canthoplasty or a canthopexy. And that's just one extra step that we have to do during our surgery to make sure that lower lid stays up and in position and does not fall down, which we don't want. Yep, the canthus is the corner of the eye. There's a medial canthus, which is the part by your nose because it's towards the midline, medial. And then the lateral canthus is the part that we're really talking about out towards the lateral edge, to the towards left to ear. right, yeah. Yeah, towards your ear. And if, if you have a weak lid, you can tighten that and mm -hmm. make a big difference. And you can do that either with sutures or you can actually do what's called a formal canthoplasty where we actually cut, cut those yeah. ligaments and we resuspend them to the to the orbital bone the bones of around the eye, eye. and then uh, you know those things can look really nice as well but not yeah. at first <laughs> at first it's a little first, odd it's yeah, a little, little little slanted looking little odd looking people just, get a little con concerned <laughs> yeah they do they're like uh so what's going on with my eyelids yeah. here and you just say just relax it's gonna be okay yeah give and it, it and give it are. six weeks and it'll be fine yeah. and they'll relax and they do great and they're nice and tight then and you have yeah. a much better look right one thing i will say though about blepharoplasty is that i i think a lot of people that get blepharoplasty and people that do blepharoplasty underestimate the complexity of these operations. I think they're very complex. Oh, I think they're super complex. Yeah, the, the eyeballs and, and how they interact with the eyelids and the cheek and the, the forehead. It's, it's, it's a very integrated system and it's, you really can't treat it in isolation from the rest of the face. Right, and that's like the, the classic of the, the guy that comes in and says, I want to just get my eyes done. <laughs> and they need a facelift. And they need you know a facelift. I mean? And plus, 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 plus. So with, with this area, the upper facial area where blepharoplasty happens, when you're talking about upper lids, to me, you're talking about upper lids and brow. When you're talking about lower lids, you're talking about lower lids and some sort of cheek lift or mid face lift. A thousand percent. Outside of that person, the 20 year old that just had some fat bags, the average person coming in for aging eyelids has some kind of what we call lid cheek descent or, um, yeah, I guess descent. So the junction between where your lower lid stops and your cheek begins is called the lid cheek junction. And with time and with age and with gravity, the cheek sort of falls away from the lower eye bone and you see a groove. People try and frequently fill that with fillers or fat yes. to camouflage this groove, but really, what you just need to do is resuspend it. You got to bring that soft tissue of the cheek back up over that lower bone. Yep, and you do. And smooth it out. Yeah, and so when you lift that right here, cheek, right here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Dr. Ravello, you can go back to the mid face <laughs> lift podcast we did, and where we talked to Dr. Ravello about what this operation did for her, and it it, it is key because if we just done the lower lids. You'd still, I'd still need have lots a hollow. Of, you'd yeah. still need lots of concealer over that. Yeah, because I haven't worn concealer in two years. It's been great. And I didn't really need a lower blepharoplasty. I didn't have bags. I didn't have extra skin. What I had was that junction, that groove, because I needed a mid face. Right. Yeah. And, and people, a lot of people need the mid face in their 30s, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just, you know, they're, they're sort of, you know, baby fat teenage cheeks kind of go away in their 20s and then by the 30s it's like hey you know 
I'm starting to look like a little well, older. That you know? is, I would say the the orbital area, the brow bone, the lids, the the cheek, that's the first place the face really shows aging. Yep. So that's usually sort of the gateway into facial plastic surgery for most patients because that's when the late 30s, early 40s, they really start to see the changes in their face in that area. So not uncommonly, someone's coming in for a, quote, lower blepharoplasty, I usually end up suggesting that we do something with the mid face, some kind of re suspension, or even just doing, even just a simple lower blood for plasty, tucking, you know, the, the muscle or suspending something yeah. just to lift that lower lid and cheek junction up and smooth it out. Otherwise, it'll still have a groove there. And that's the whole point. You want it to look rejuvenated. So fill it in, elevate it, blend it, make it look good. Do you do fat grafting in the lower lids? I do not. I have been down that road, and uh, no thank you. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't like fat grafting yeah. there. If it's not if it's not perfect, it's a problem. That's right. the That's the issue, and, and I've had I've had to pick fat out of orbicularis, oculi muscle. Like, it's not it's not good. It's not, I, I would prefer to use fillers any day of the week for that area. It's just, it's a very thin-skinned area. You can see any irregularities so easily. The fat is not super specific in terms of where it ends up going. So it's tricky. I would rather just do the lift or do some kind of suspension and obliterate the problem rather than trying to fill it in with something. Yep. Agreed. That's, that's my idea. Surgery is better for that. It really does work. If you release right. that ligament on the lower lid and let that fat spill out, I, and I make a little pre-periosteal pocket mm -hmm. so it's, I don't get under the periosteum, which is the thick coating of the bone, I put it above that, it just looks great. Yeah, it just smooths everything out. And so all of these... See? 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 Right here. For those of you <laughs> listening at home, go to the YouTube channel and check it out. You can see it there. You can zoom in. That's right. Um, and all of these procedures can be done at the same time. So it's called a quad, quad bluff. That means we're doing four eyelids, two uppers, two lowers at the same time. Can definitely be done together at the same time. If you're at all thinking about doing all four, you should do all four at the same time. It makes no sense to do them piecemeal. I'd like three eyelids. <laughs> do two, do uppers, two uppers, one lower. Just one lower. Just leave the left one alone. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it'll be fine. No. <laughs> no, but you definitely can do all of them together. You can do it with the brow. You can throw a facelift in. You can, you know, do the whole thing. The whole shebang. It can all be done together. Right. Um, or you can just do the uppers or you can just do the lowers, but... Whatever you need. Yeah, so in, in the world of, uh, of Hollywood, um, a lot of times I'll do this one, you know, one six-month period or one year and do this as the other part. So that, like, especially this for being, the upper. The listeners. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. The <laughs> upper facial rejuvenation first. Yes. And then the lower facial rejuvenation next. And when I do the upper part, I do brow, blefs, mid-face, all once. Yeah. Um, and then go down later and do the face, neck lip lift whatever right i mean if you do all of that together that's a full that's a full deal it's great but yeah it's well if you'll be here on tuesday it's a big uh, recovery we're doing we're <laughs> doing facial implants facelift revision rhino it's it it's an extravagant the game makeover yeah but you know sure. it's like it's like everything's small but it's a lot at one time so it's going to be a big big makeover which can be done which can be done but if you're just doing the eyes recovery for that um it's not bad, you know, from a pain standpoint. If you're doing the brow, you're gonna have a headache. It's gonna for be Doctor Velo, it's two days. Yes, and you're back in surgery, no problem, <laughs> literally. Um, for anybody but, else, it's a week. <laughs> Everyone else, a week to ten days. Time off. You're gonna have some swelling. You're gonna have some bruising. Pain is is really not bad. You may have some vision changes for six weeks. I think I had to wear glasses for six weeks because my eyes were just swollen. You know, the muscles yeah. were swollen. They weren't quite working together in tandem. So it was just easier for me to use glasses and see than to try and get my contacts to coordinate with my muscles that were still really swollen. Well, well and also from the, uh, when we do a transconjunctival lower lid bleff, you get a little bit of leakage of serum and, and proteinaceous right. fluid. That does can blur. You got. I just tell people carry some tears with you, wash them out. Right. After about a week, that kind of goes away. Yeah, you can. You may have some dry eyes after after a while. That usually goes away. And we should say that the for that blepharoplasty, that transconjunctival approach, that's an incision on the inside of the eyelid. So if you're not taking skin on the outside, the only incision you're going to have is going to be on the inside, on that inner part of the eyelid. So you don't even see it. But it can give you some problems, yeah, with some dry eyes and stuff like that. So dry eyes, some bruising, maybe some temporary vision changes while your swelling is still there. Um, 
you know, vision, compromise, loss of vision, incredibly rare, rare. and unusual. Um, that's just not a thing. But I'd say probably most common complication long term would be dry eyes. Yeah, I have dry eyes to start with. So like, people a lot have of people dry do. eyes. Yeah, they're, they're going to be dry. It's, they're going to have dry eyes yeah. afterwards as well. But if, it, if you're just doing the eyes, just doing the brow, it's a fairly straightforward recovery. You could be back to work if you people don't have to see your face. If you can do virtual, you could be back to work in a week. If you know you have some bruising and some swelling, maybe give it a week or two. But it's and if you don't care, people think about you. You can be back to work in a week. It's fine. There it's you go. Pretty simple. Um, I think that's kind of all the, the highlights. That's it. For our 101 series. For our 101. We'll, we'll get in the weeds in we'll a different get in a little one. bit. We always do cost. Cost of a blepharoplasty. Well, in Beverly Hills. In, in Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills, Hills today, if I do, yeah. well, because I don't do just blepharoplasty. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm doing a four-lid bleph and a brow and a mid-face, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a big that's number. A, <laughs> that's a number I don't even want to say on here because, you know, somebody's going to be like, Ooh! you know, whereas I, in if you're in you know, Tulsa or something, then it's a lot less, you know. Right. So and so I, the, the price lot. is going to vary depending on whether or not you're just doing uppers, if you're just We're doing expensive, lowers. expensive, but worth it. That's what I say. That's, but that's just it's my true. motto in life. <laughs> well, I mean, but the thing is, do you want to, like, I don't know, you know, it's, hmm, it's very, very challenging. You don't want to skimp on your plastic surgery, people. That's what I'm going to say. You don't. You know, you don't. You don't. You don't want to skimp. You want to go to somebody that's tried and true, has lots of good results, and is going to get it right for you. And, and and if things aren't right, they're going to work for you to get it right. So, like, that's when you find out how good your surgeon is, is when there are problems. You know, you d that that's it. That's yeah. that's why that's why people fly here to Beverly Hills to get this stuff done. We do a lot of it. But with that said, you can get it done anywhere. And you can get it done by people who are really competent, board-certified plastic surgeons and facial plastic surgeons who are extremely talented and can, can do a great job. It just happens to be expensive here. Expensive here. And, and for whatever reason, we do a lot of it. It's just it's right. part of the deal. Part of the deal. But if you need to know numbers, people, because people love to hear numbers, I would say simple quad bluff, two uppers, two lowers, no mid face, no brow. You're looking at anything between average 10 to 15, 10 to 18,000. You're throwing in a brow. You're throwing in a mid face. I'm trying to conference, make an eyelid. I'm making faces. Just, that's not what I try. I saying. know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm getting okay. in. This it's okay. I'm just is saying. a national I know. I got it. broadcast. Don't listen to me. I just work here. <laughs> it's international. It's international. I know. We got some some uh, surgeon coming from uh, uh, Georgia to visit. He wants, right. to do, he wants to do like a, a whole like fellowship here. I was like, I, I can't do that. Georgia the country? Georgia the state? To, yeah. Tbilisi. You know, the... Georgia the country. Georgia the country. International. Worldwide. Yes. Mr. Worldwide. No, it's, you're on this podcast too. Don't look at me. <laughs> this is worldwide. By the way, they the don't tune rank. in to listen to me. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're, they're listening to you. They're happy that I'm here just to be like a wall to bounce the, the ball off of, you know. So anyway, uh, but yeah, blepharoplasty is expensive. Uh, in New York, it's probably, that would probably be even more than that. Probably, probably 20000 in New yeah. York. Throw a in brow. Dallas, it's probably like eight or yeah. nine. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the prices are there. It's, it's so if you it's put so the brow in the, dependent. If you put the brow and the mid face into it for me, that's uh, probably about thirty five, forty thousand right. dollars. Start at, starting at yeah, start adding some tens of thousands to that. And by the way, that's today. It's two thousand twenty two. If you're listening to this in two thousand twenty five, <laughs> it's probably well, double or know. triple or you know now it's two million dollars right. because you know somebody's not got the the reins on the inflation lately. Yeah, inflation's a bitch. It's so. it's hurting us badly. Yeah. So yeah, but it is expensive. Expect to pay for what you get. Uh, if you want to get a great result, you need to go to, to people that get great results. That's all. Wherever you are. Yep. Do your homework. Let us know if you have any questions. But I think that's enough for a blepharoplasty. We tried to keep it short and sweet. It was pretty short. It wasn't too bad. Sort of sweet. <laughs> it's it's uh, yes, I think so. Well, anyway, this is the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast coming to you from the 90210.